me. Um, <clears throat> let's take a quick peek at the binary. Uh, so I'm just going to run binject here with a dash h. Actually, let me make this a little bit bigger. I forgot. Properties. Font. I right, so when it ran it with the dash h option, you can see all the different uh, command line parameters it takes. Uh, I didn't talk about every single one of these, but you get the idea. What I have in this directory is a little uh, block of shell code, which is just going to pop up a message box, and I have notepad.exe here. Um, when I run this notepad.exe, you know, it just runs, it does its normal notepad stuff. That's kind of cool. I can use binject. Uh, I can say dash i notepad.exe dash o um, hacked notepad.exe and say dash d and give it my message box shellcode. Um, what I'm going to do now is give it that dash t switch. This is going to force the message box shellcode to be a TLS callback. And it just runs, it doesn't spit out anything. Like I said, very simple, easy to use tool. Now when I run hacked notepad, first thing that pops up is this, you know, Low black hat, I'm in your process, um, and then notepad runs. That's pretty cool, but you could have achieved the same functionality there with an entry point redirect. Let's actually take a look at the, uh, uh, at the binary. I'm going to pull it up real quickly in PE view. You see what it did was add a section called .nic down here at the bottom, and inside of that is our TLS directory. Uh, and we have a TLS callback pointer sitting right here. So it's, it's done all this stuff. It's made the section. It's set up the, the callbacks and every piece of data in here that will actually make this thing work. Um, and inside of that callback is, of course, our malicious code. Um, and when you pull this up in IDA, um, the first thing you're looking at, the, the entry point itself is completely unchanged. This is the normal entry point of notepad.exe. So, uh, it's a little bit stealthier than an entry point redirection right there. So, um, Another kind of advantage of Binject, and I think I mentioned something about it earlier, about being, uh, it has a pretty good algorithm for actually adding sections to a binary. What a lot of people do when they try to add sections to a binary um, is just they blindly, they see, okay, my, my section headers are here, it's an array. I'm just going to go to the next offset and add another section header and everything will be magic because it's always going to be nulls there. There's always going to be plenty of padding. There's no problem. Problem is you're not always going to have plenty of padding and notepad.exe is one of those specific examples where you do not have enough padding. Uh, I have enough padding for one section maybe but I think in this particular example if I add two sections uh, I'm actually going to be overwriting part of my import table. That's going to be bad news. Um, so inject I so here I just ran binjack to create another new notepad.exe. I'm just going to rerun this command again um, with the input being itself. Uh, and I'm going to just keep doing this uh, over and over and over. I'm going to make a bunch of sections. Now I'm going to PE view that. And you can see, of course, it made a whole bunch of sections here. So clearly I've, I've exhausted what I could have achieved using the slack space in, a, uh, in the header section of this PE binary. So um, what it's actually done, if I notice the, the first section in this binary actually begins at the offset 600 instead of the, the original 400. So what Binject does is actually completely restructures the binary if it needs to. If it is able to detect that it doesn't have enough slack space left in the, the end of that headers, it detects that there's something there, like the import table, um, it's actually going to restructure the binary such that it can actually make space if it needs to. So it's pretty well done um, in that perspective. And, and a lot of these basic features like the adding the, the import DLLs and stuff like that are pretty hardened because we were using them been using them for a while in internal projects so that they work very well. Anything that's edgy uh, might not be as, as flushed out and you might get bugs and crashes, but um, some of this stuff is pretty pretty good. So, uh, any questions? Just deer in headlight, okay. <laughs> All right, well, thanks. Um, once again, here's my information. Um, Nick Harver, uh, 
and, and the tool, the Binject and the proof of concept for the new process injection technique is on my website. You can download it, um, whatever. Give me your thoughts. And thank you.